So what will this market scanner do? First of all, when you use this market scanner, you can still open up the charts. That's, that's perfectly fine. But the thing is, you don't have to because everything you need for your trading is actually in this one tabular format. And if you ask me about 6E or 6J or ZB or whatever, I can talk about it for five minutes based on these numbers. So once you learn how to interpret these numbers, you will not actually have to open up the chart. You can still open it up, of course. But why is this good? Because numbers are objective. The information is quantified. It's not subjective. Everybody, all of us here are quite aware of looking at charts and be subject to cognitive biases, even visual illusions or uh, optical illusions and uh, subjective judgments and all the mistakes that we have ever done in the trading business on the charts over the years. And I'm sure everybody understands what those are. Now, however, quantifying information and easily assigning colors or short messages to them makes it much more objective and eliminates much of the, the cognitive risk that we are well, actually subject to as human beings as we go about doing this business. Further advantages of doing this this way is, well, productivity, efficiency, and health. As we all know, sitting on a chair, especially intraday traders, eight, 10 hours a day is anything but healthy. There's lots of data, proof, evidence out there. Everybody knows it's just not healthy, period. So we need to find some ways to be able to move around the house and still be able to do the job. In these columns, it will be possible to, we'll be able to attach emails, and sound messages. So all you need is a little earplug, a little Bluetooth, and you, you can be fixing the bicycle in the garage or making coffee in the kitchen. You will still know what's happening on 6J or ZB or NQ or whatever else is your fancy, or even ETFs or stocks, whatever is in your data feed. You can attach WAV files. You can even record your own voice and say, NQ is breaking out, something like that. And you can have a host of sound alarms, and if you happen to be passing through airports or gas stations or whatever, you can still, you can set up your emails so that you're never far away from your actual screen or the information that you need to make decisions. Further advantage, we, all, we are all aware of correlations. Let's just think of the indexes, for example, you know, the ES, NQ, RTY, YM, although it's a little looser these days if you look at the YM and the RTY, but, but most of the time there's strong correlation, of course, between these markets and how they move. And by looking at these, at this tabular format, you can see correlation and you can make decisions much, or just to get trade ideas, much faster than looking at three, four, five charts. Often what happens is that one correlated market moves before the other. So let me just Let's say the energy market, C-L-H-O-R-B, are strongly correlated. Maybe the C-L moves. Well, you might be late for the C-L trade, but R-B and H-O haven't moved yet. So same thing with the precious metal market or the treasuries market. There's, there's certain but well-defined important advantages of understanding and taking advantage of correlations. And this tabular format makes it much easier than looking at three, four charts and trying to figure out what's going on. All right, the next big advantage, we standardize risk and price movement. The idea is that we bring disparate, which means information that is not easily or just cannot be compared, we're gonna try a common platform, a standard, so that we can compare information that would be otherwise if compared, it would be misleading. Let me give you an example. Let's say instrument A moved 20 ticks today, and then instrument B moved 200 ticks today. And of course, our first reaction is, wow, B had a crazy day. Well, not so fast, because maybe B moves 200 ticks every day. However, if A 
tends to move 150 ticks every day or daily on average, and today it moved 20, there's such an extreme volatility compression, which is important information for us. So we need to, we need to find a way to standardize these measurement units. And here, right here at the bottom, standardization allows us to compare apples to oranges, so things that are not easy to compare otherwise. For example, you might say that, what if I say A, instrument A moved 2.5 standard deviations, but instrument B moved 4.5 standard deviations. So I'm not counting in ticks, I'm not counting certain, not in US dollars, I'm not counting in, I don't know, not even percentages, standard deviations or ATRs also are the best way to compare movements between markets. This numeric quantitative data in these charts, in, the, in these columns, are all standardized, which means if you look at the RC, we're going to go into the details, but when you see this is 706 and the other one is 1500 something, then you know it's twice as much. There's no distortion. Okay, so I think I drove that message home pretty well. Let's see what else is here. This table will tell you all the important phases of price action, which means it's not just the signal, the actual trigger that you will be notified of, which is the ideal candle to engage with the market, on which to engage with the market. It will also notify you of events lead, leading up to the potential trigger. Now I'm just mentioning the setup phase. The setup is the last step before the trigger is expected to arrive. You can use it um, the way that I'm going to show you just for presentation purposes, which will be on the four hour chart and the daily chart. But the time frame will be completely up to you. All right. So, identifies setups and triggers and all the other important phases of price action. What's the point? You always know what's happening without having to look at the charts. When eventually the, the signal comes, the trigger comes, well, we don't just have to sit there and watch the trade go by. We can actually execute the trade with our strategies automatically or manually or semi-automatically in a discretionary fashion using any of our three strategies per SDR, DT, or BTX. You can always dig deeper and visit our website and watch our videos for more. Let's move on. And just one last piece of the puzzle here I'd like to highlight. What is the idea? Why these columns? Why this information? Why not something else? There is a reason for that. Every piece of information is there for a reason. And no column is wasted. And there's no further columns because we don't really need more. We have everything. And these will be the indicators here. You'll be able to click on these links, by the way, later in the slideshow if you'd like to visit and learn about these indicators exactly. All right, so here, here we go. The red, the red color shows a typical movement of the market in a trending environment. And we will be looking for trending environments. As everybody knows, at certain stages in the trend, there will be some consolidation. Just think of, and that's just, that's not just true for the financial market, just think of the real estate market. When price, house prices go up, well, they don't go up in a straight line and everybody who maybe hasn't bought yet but wants to buy might be looking for a little pause. I don't wanna buy at the top. Well, what are those people are looking for? Actually, they're looking for a pullback in house prices might even be true for other markets, the potato market or the car market or whatever, but this is just normal human behavior. This behavior, the yellow meaning the consolidation areas, which could be horizontal, by the way, doesn't have to be sloping backwards. The green area is where we do want to engage with the market. If everything goes well, the white area is that little piece, you see, when we go to a restaurant, we don't want to buy the restaurant. We just want to have something to eat. As traders, we just want to have a piece of the action. This white is our trade in ideal situations. Of course, there will be sideways markets and losing trades, part of the deal, but this is what we're aiming for. This has been pretty stable. It's a characteristic of the market. Why? Because the market is nothing but a crowd of people doing stuff, and the crowd of people will 
display crowd behavior. They can't even help it. They're not even conscious of it. It will just surface. And this is what we're trying to take advantage of. And our software was built to capture these situations as effectively as possible. Last thing, the time frame. It can be any time frame. I'm going to show you one example for a time frame, but if you want to do your testing or your trading activities on a five minute chart or a thousand tick chart or, or I don't know, volume chart or a mini chart of any sort, of course, the software was built to be ready for you any way you want to use it. None of these columns are there just for fun. It is there for a certain reason. And once you get to know our work, you will see that this all fits into a rigorous, evidence-based, quantitatively driven methodology. This, uh, this market analyzer on the right is the finished product. This is the starting point. I have saved certain templates, so just to save time. And why do I have the two charts? Not because we need them, but because I might want to point situations out for you visually, which, are, which will be displayed here quantitatively, all right? So let me just leave these two charts on the left. We'll use them or we'll just look at them when we want to. Otherwise, they don't really matter because what we're doing here is just quantitative data. All right, so step number one, I want to monitor a certain list of instruments. This can be anything and it could be any asset class depending on the data feed. Again, it could be futures, ETFs, stocks, whatever you want, Forex up to you. In this case, we're just looking at futures. Okay, so this is a list. It is 20 some instruments, my usual list, and it's very easy. Most of you will know this. I have saved the template, so this is anti-webinar start. It just loads the instruments. And if you look at the next column here, day, now what do I want here? We mentioned that the first two columns come from Ninja, so obviously the instrument this comes from Ninja Trader, and the days means days left until the rollover, and that's important information for us if we trade futures contracts. Obviously, if the contract expires in one day, I need to know that fact before I put on a trade. Okay, so this is the number of days till the next rollover, and I save this already. So all I need to do is just double click on this day column and that will load the second day. Of course, some of them are yellow and negative numbers. That just means that that contract expired. And if I just hop onto my control center, then everybody knows what I need to do now. I need to just go to database management and roll over update the contracts. And then the yellows will disappear and the current contract will be Part, will become part of the table. All right, now I might as well show this to you. So I'm going to, there's a little trick here. For example, I want to save the day, just this template, but I want to save the latest instruments, then just click on save instruments, save the template, and if I load, then these yellows will not come back because now I have the latest version. Of course, it's no big deal, but but just a neat trick that we can use here. All right, let's move forward. And as you see, the next column in the finished product will be triple R. Triple R is one of our most important indicators out of the nine essential indicators, relative, REMEC relative returns. That means one of the, one of the indicators where we measure price movements in standard deviation. Just a reminder, if I say 10 ticks on the 6E or 10 ticks on PL or 10 ticks on ZN, tick is not a comparable measurement unit. There's nothing wrong with ticks, of course. It's just not comparable because I'm comparing an ant to an elephant. What is a big jump to an ant is nothing to an elephant. So instruments behave differently. The only way we can compare movement, actual volatility between across instruments is by converting movement to standard deviation. This is what triple R does. So here we go. And we have some color schemes here, which means many of you will know that anything above two standard deviations, or actually in this indicator, less than minus two, 
is an extreme move to the upside or an extreme move to the downside, which means, just in simple English, unusual, very unusual behavior. Imagine like you have a child jumping on the trampoline and every day the child jumps on the trampoline and then next day it just jumps 10 times bigger. There's something happened to that child. It's an unusual behavior. This is what this unusual behavior will be measured quantitatively and objectively for us here. And you can see that on platinum today, actually it's the close of yesterday because I run this on the daily time frame. So you see that if you ask me what did platinum do yesterday, I can tell you without having, without opening up a chart. Platinum had a 255 standard deviation move yesterday. Let's click on it and let's look, let's check it out, what it looks like, what that kind of thing or movement looks like on the chart. And here's what it looks like, this big bar. That was the up move. Okay, so this is how it works. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to load the third column. Here we go. So now we're going to have the triple R, double click. And now I know any instrument makes an unusual move to the upside, to the downside, measured objectively, I will know about it. So let's move quickly to the next column, which is rib. It, that just means Remek inside bar. Now, Everybody knows what is an inside bar, so you might ask, okay, what's the big deal about inside bar? Well, we want to identify, first of all, long tails, up or down. LT means long tails, and they will be identified for us by the machine, with the machine, without having to open up the chart. So if you ask me, there was a long tail yesterday on the 6A, did I have to open up the chart? No. The long tail is right here and all the other markets. Now that compared or combined with some other information can already get us interested in engaging with certain instruments. Long tails, as we know, up or down, often indicate momentum. In the rib, we also have another function, which I don't have an example for it right now because this is real time, but we have not just the long tail, but of course we also identify the inside bars. If you look at the conditions, and let me use this just to show you quickly how these color schemes are set up. We have a numeric code, and then we attach a, a message in English or double inside bar, basically what it means, long tail, inside bar long tail on the same candle. That's an interesting situation. And double inside bar long tail. So all these situations which are to us momentum traders are potentially important, will be automatically identified for us. It will be here. I'm just going to move to the next column. And we have this indicator, the triple R indicator, which converts volatility into standard deviation, remember? And what is the hot zone? The hot zone is basically the first, let me just try to draw a rectangle here. So this is here a hot zone to the downside. And that starts when this indicator crosses over zero and spends time below zero. The first pullback in the hot zone is a serious opportunity for us. Look at this blue hot zone, which means bullish hot zone. Crossover, first pullback after the crossover. Look what happened. This is what happened. Another hot zone, and then I'll stop. Here we go. Blue hot zone, first pullback in the hot zone. Well, it didn't go very far, but at least a 1R was there. So this is what the hot zone means. And this uh, column here, HZ, points out on any number of markets, anytime, without having to open up the chart, if there's a bullish or bearish hot zone in the works right now. That will be serious information for me as a momentum trader. The next column will be KSZ, which is the Keltner score. The concept is very simple. The KSC simply shows you, let's suppose I don't have these charts, okay? I'll put these charts in the corner. I don't know what's happening on the GC. I don't remember. 
But if you ask me, where is price on GC right now? This is, for me, this is a daily candle, but you can put it on a two-minute chart. It doesn't matter. It will do the same job. But if you ask me, where is price on GC at this moment on a daily candle? Or where is price on corn at this moment on a daily candle? I will be able to tell you, and you will be too, if you have this tool. Look at this. Anything less than minus one means price is outside the lower Keltner. Outside the lower Keltner. Now, for us, that is already information that we want. Here's price. Um, I should do it the other way. So this is a Keltner channel, let's say, and outside the lower Keltner, price is here. 1.3, less than minus one, it's outside. Well, it got here one way or the other. And what does price tend to do next? It tends to go back inside. And this is what we call a bear flag. But with high likelihood, I know about a bear flag before the bear flag happens. Then my answer is yes. And you will too. And if you have this tool, 1.3 means that soon we're going to have a bear flag. And then after the bear flag, we might have a potential trigger. But that's another story. The next two, setup and signal, will be coming from our main indicator. So two pieces of information coming from the same indicator. Again, setup, let me just make it short. Okay, it's the bear flag and the bull flag, that's it. Short is a bear flag, long is a bull flag. Certain criteria, we have our proprietary ways of doing these things, so, and we believe in what we do. So when you see this, you know what's going on. And we can hop on the PL and you will be looking at a bull flag. And please note, our setup column is a four-hour chart. And here is your bull flag on a four-hour chart. 240 minutes, this is the bull flag. Here's the New Zealand dollar. We don't look at it too often. There is a bear flag on the four-hour chart right here. Ready to trigger. This is a viable opportunity coming up. I understand that there's a time frame conflict, so we could, we could talk about the details here, but that's another subject. So this is how that works. And the next one will be the actual trigger, which means in our quantitative mathematical calculations, the objectively identified ideal candle to engage with the market. That's what our trigger is. Not a guess, not a hunch, not a feeling, it's a mathematical reality. All right, two more columns quickly. RRS, I'll just load it and tell you in one sentence what it is. Then you can find all the details on our website. RRS is admittedly for longer term traders. RRS, you will quickly notice that the ES is 100. The MBT Bitcoin, for example, is 138. And some Measure some numbers are look at this 57 ZC corn 57. What does this mean? If you had put the same money in Bitcoin, you would have 38% more profit. And it was not a good idea one year ago to put your money in corn. So this is a return compared to the SP 500. Well, technically the ES, but for our practical purposes, it's just like the SP. Some of these trends can be long-term, and currencies, for example, are capable of long runs, as are energies. This is obviously a bit more long-term asset allocation, but I just wanted to show you this example that it's not, our life is, doesn't have to revolve around the five-minute chart. There's other resources that we might want to deploy or consider. Okay, last but not least, certainly not least, actually, this is our most powerful indicator, is the REMAC converter it compares, actually it converts volatility into US dollars. Volatility into US dollars. And it's not as simple as you might think. Actually, what you see here on our charts is the REMEC converter indicator version, indicator format. And you say that you see here that one ATR on this chart, which is the RB for our chart, one ATR is 800 74 USD. How on earth would I know that? Would I be able to calculate that if I didn't have that indicator? But that's crucial information for me. 
because when I go long, I need to reckon with, well, first of all, the distance between the midline, Keltner, and the edge is 2.58 yards. If I go along here, I need this type of stop, which is about 2.58 yards. So at each trade, I must know what is 2.58 yards in dollars, and I must know if I have enough money for that. If you use BT in brackets, then this is done for you automatically. That's the beauty of BT. But there's also one more neat thing here with the converter. This is one ATR, but what if I want 2.5 ATRs and I don't want to do the multiplication while I trade? You simply change the one to 2.5, and now you will know that it's $2,180. And you can change it to a 60 minute chart or a tick chart or any type of chart. Converter will do the calculation for you instantly, 819 USD. This is impossible to calculate, especially in the heat of the battle. And also, if you look at this list, in the meantime, it's displayed here, you'll see the real risk. Are you aware that actually the NQ is one of the, if not often, the most risky instrument to trade? And for example, the Australian dollar or the New Zealand dollar is one of the least risky? And people don't know because they don't know how to compare risk to risk. Remec Converter does a job for us. Mm -hmm.